Alrighty, so today this video is going to be installing Ubuntu server and we're going to do the Ubuntu server without the GUI. Um, actually, I think the way that it's natively installed, it installs with no GUI, So, but we're not going to add any GUI to it because this is going to be used for a variety of purposes and I do think that a lot of times servers don't really necessarily need a GUI. I think the services provided on a server shouldn't be GUI. You're not really using anything that's browsing a website or anything that uses a mouse really. So. Um, plus, it's resources that are, aren't necessarily needed to be running on a server. If you've got thousands of these things, it's, you know, if you did GUI on thousands of them, you would have a lot of excess RAM and potentially some CPU usage just by having GUI running. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go to Ubuntu.com, and uh, we're going to go to Download, and we're going to download Ubuntu Server right here. We're going to do the long-term support one. And um, I've already downloaded it, so this I can cancel this, but you're going to have to let it go all the way through. It's a decent size, 850 megs. And um, the other thing I wanted to show you was that we're going to talk about is um, creating a bootable USB stick with the ISO that you download. You need this for cases where you're installing on a physical environment, like a, another um, computer or server or something there. That's what you would install with. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. Most of the time, I think you'll be using a Windows machine. Not many of you guys probably use Linux as your desktop, so um, I won't do a tutorial on that. If you're already using Linux as your desktop, you can probably you know, learn this on your own without anybody doing it. But the Windows one here talks about a product, the, the tutorial in Ubuntu talks about a product that creates the USB bootable, and that's Rufus. Rufus is a free tool that you can download. It's just rufus.ie. And this is the tool we're going to use to down to uh, take the ISO file that we're downloading from Ubuntu, and we're going to put it onto a USB stick that's bootable. So it's actually pretty easy to do. You just go down to the download page. You download Rufus 3.8. Uh, and I'll go ahead and click that now because I actually haven't downloaded it yet. And let's go to show all here. Close that because I don't need it. Let's open my downloads location here. And you can see Rufus 3.8 right here. So if you run this Rufus 3.8, it's not an installer. It's just an application. And what we're going to do is we're going to, since we've already downloaded the ISO, the Ubuntu Live Server 14.3 Live Server right there, we're going to go ahead and, and I've got a 32 gig USB stick stuck into my USB drive over there. I'm going to select that ISO. I hit the select button right there. And let's go to downloads. Let's go to Ubuntu 18.4.3. And uh, we're going to leave all those default. I don't really want to do anything else except for just choose that and then hit the start button. And it's going to wipe out whatever's on that thumb drive. So keep in mind when you do that. Um, this is an interesting thing here. So I've had issues in the past with writing as ISO image mode. Sometimes you have to do write DD image mode. But you'll figure that out really quick when you try to boot to it. And if it doesn't boot, you might want to try writing it in DD mode instead. So let's go ahead and write that. And I'm going to pause the video while it's doing that. All right, so that took roughly four minutes to burn that to my USB stick, which is just a SAN disk. It's not like it's anything exceptional. It's not one of those high-speed ones. It's probably a pretty cheap one. So four or five minutes, and you've got a bootable USB stick. Now, this is literally the same settings that Ubuntu.com recommends when you're using Rufus. This isn't something that I just came up with. Ubuntu is the one that actually says use Rufus.ie. And these are the same settings. I mean, this is a little bit older version of Rufus than what I use. And so some of the cluster size might be a little different, but the basics are, are right there is the same. So this USB stick should now be bootable. And so we're going to actually go ahead and plug it in to a system and boot it up. So let me change that really quick. Okay, so um, I'll be totally honest here. I didn't really plug it into a system. I have um, VMware Workstation running, and so I'm booting off of the ISO. Um, in your scenario, this if you did plug it into a physical box, this would probably look almost identical. The only difference would be this text probably fills your whole screen because that's just how computers work. Um, this is this is running more of a graphical representation of, of um, text that's on the screen, which is why it only fills this little bit of my window here instead of the entire screen, which is actually kind of unfortunate because that's pretty small on the window. So we're just going to go through some of these um, basic steps. For the install process, it's pretty easy to do. Um, I'm in the United States, so we'll just do with English. Um, we're going to install Ubuntu. Uh, I don't need to do any bonding. We'll just stick with that. Address there, proxy, I don't have any proxies. That's fine for a mirror. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and use entire disk. I'm not going to use LVM. 
these are basically I'm not setting any options at all I'm just basically using the defaults and it's going to basically it's telling me it's going to delete what's on that disk so keep in mind I mean if you're installing this on your computer um, don't boot into that if that's the same computer you had Windows on because if you install it like that you'll probably end up wiping out your Windows so um, we're just going to I guess I should go with this name here server's name I don't care what it's going to be called we can call this whatever you want really let's call this geekhead server pick a username dm706 choose a password uh, I don't know I don't care I'm going to make it the same as the username that's not super secure so I would suggest that if you create a username and a password you don't use the password to be the same as the username so instead of Instead of doing that, instead of being a bad example, I'll set it to something else. And that's probably too short of a password. If you really want secure things, do way more than uh, seven or eight or nine characters. Do something up in the 12, 15 range. Because uh, if you do any kind of hashing on passwords, um, anything that short is actually pretty easy to hash. Okay, so I'm not going to install any of these common built-in stuff. We're just going to go ahead and hit done. And I guess it's already it's already done. It's already written everything it needs to do to disk. Yeah, media is ejected. We'll just go with that. <laughs> All right, so we're rebooting on a physical box. You'd want to unplug the USB cable at that point. Since this is not a physical box, we're going to just... Um... Oh, yeah, so it's definitely not booting off the USB anymore. You can tell it's definitely booting off the disk. This is different output here. And this is going to be the first time it's come into the Ubuntu OS. Um, so there's not going to be any GUI again. This is basically it. This is what you see when you're done. So we made it DOS DM706. Oh, look at that cool stuff that it just shared my, my SSH key footprint, fingerprint. Okay. doesn't matter because it's not going to be exposed anywhere. So that kind of stuff you probably want to keep. I think that's a private key, so you want to keep that to yourself. And basically we're on the server now, so that's that's it. If I do IP address, to show me IP address, you can see that I've got a network interface that's live. Let's get an IP from my internal DHCP server. And um, that's going to be it for this video because that's all I wanted to show for installing Ubuntu. And um, hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks.